Hey everybody and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. My name is Instant Name here and today we'll be taking a look at part 2 of the landscape tutorial series. Um, this part is mostly going to be how to generate weight maps in TerraSculptor and import it into UE. If you're not sure or don't really know what weight maps are, they're practically auto materials that were pre-baked out in TerraSculptor then brought into Unreal Engine as textures. They're not dynamic at all, but they're usually way more performant than auto material. And um, of course, auto material works really well if you're going to be doing most of your work in Unreal Engine. That's why I say it's more like this is an alternative way to how many landscape tutorials have the landscape set up. So if you want to follow auto materials, you can skip this video and um, really just go ahead and go to the other stuff like when we cover foliage and all that. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So now that we're back in TerraSculptor, like I explained in the previous episode, I explained how to reopen your landscape if for some reason you closed it in between the parts. Um, so you should just go ahead and open up the landscape and what we're going to do is we're going to be generating weight maps. Now weight maps is kind of like the opposite of auto material where it isn't a dynamic fin where you can't just adjust the landscape and then it just auto applies rock and grass but it's more optimized in the way that you pre-bake out the textures that you defines where everything should be. So you have a texture that defines where the grass should be, you have a texture that defines where the rock should be, and all that. So it's not the same as auto material, it's kind of like the opposite, it's a replacement, and not necessarily a replace. Okay, they both are different ways of doing things, but they achieve the same result at the end. So what you want to do is you want to go to the top left, go to weight map, and then there's a few you can choose. You could choose to map a texture based on altitude, flow line. There's a lot to work with. And even if you want to get more advanced, which I will in future parts, you can use the composite weight map extractor. But to simplify for now, we're just going to use two. We're going to use a slope and another slope. And what this will do is we'll map a grass texture to everything that's between 0 and 20 degrees flat. And then for any steeper, we'll just go ahead and map it to rock. So what you want to do is you want to go to top left weight map, click on slope. And then what we're going to do, the parameters, minimum should be on 0. I'm going to bump up the maximum to 20. Um, this is practically where all the grass will be. So if you think this is a bit too harsh, you can play around with the values to find something you like. Uh, let's try 10 for example. So everything from 0 to 10 degrees, I'll preview that. Actually wait, actually broke for some reason. I'm just gonna ignore that, gonna go ahead, go to slope, okay. You just have to close the slope weight map extractor and reopen it again if you have problems. And you can just go ahead and scale how much of a degree um, there should be grass on the landscape. And now that I think about it, something like 15 is generating pretty good results. So I'm going to try 15. Full of is how much of a blur should be applied to the edges. Now you don't want this on zero. Because if you do, um, the landscape texture would look a bit blocky on the edges. So it's better to add at least a small bit of fall off. I think something like 10 works pretty well and usually eliminates a lot of blockiness. Um, but of course you can adjust the fall off like you want. I'm just going to go with 10 for this example. So everything from 0 to 15 degrees will be replaced with grass. And that's defined by this 8-bit grayscale texture. Uh, sadly, to my knowledge, UE doesn't ex um, work with 16-bit yet. It only works with 8-bit grayscale, which is a bit unfortunate, but hey, what can you do? We're just going to go to the File Output tab here, and just click the file name, click the triple dots, and then we're just going to save this as VM for weight map underscore, and this is what I usually like to do, is I like to add what type of weight map we're using. We're using the slope, 
And then I like to name it what settings we use so it's easier to reference it when we go back. So I'm going to use 0, 15, and 10. So 0 degrees on the minimum, 15 degrees on the maximum, and 10 fall off. And I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Awesome. Now, because I'm going to use the slope weight map again, I'm not going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to use it again. So I'm going to use the maximum to 90, which is the maximum amount of degrees. And what I want to do is I want to put the minimum to the max we defined um, in the grass. And this is going to be all the parts that's filled up with rock. Uh, something like, I want 10 blendings, I feel like 5 actually now. I think I'm going to play safe and do a 10 blend on this. And this is going to be all the parts that's uh, filled up with rock. So this is just like the opposite. Of the grass, so grass took 0 and 15, and rocks took in up, taking up 15 and 90. And with a fall of 10, I'm just gonna go ahead and triple dot, click on your VM slope 0, 15, it just adjust the settings to fit. So 15 should be the minimum, 90 the maximum, and we're still using the same fall off. So just go ahead and save that. Now we have both weight maps, so I'm just gonna go ahead file and save project and that's perfect and we already have our weight maps exported so I'll take us to a new project in UE5. So welcome to one of the most abrupt frame cuts you've probably seen in your entire life. We're back in Unreal Engine, I've just set up a new project with the third person template BP, nothing too interesting, it's really nothing has changed. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and change stuff on ourselves. So we're just gonna go ahead and open up our content browser, right click, and actually create a new folder. We'll call this maps, and this is where all our maps will go, which is only one for this tutorial series. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and create basic asset. I don't really want to create a basic asset like this. I usually like going file and uh, new level. I'm just using the default layout. Then I click the save button and save the new map in a new folder which is called our landscape one, which is our first landscape and our only landscape. I'll just save it as a new map. Awesome, so now we have a new terrain to go ahead and play around with. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click the activate landscape editing mode button. Uh, the shortcut is shift F2. And it's just going to open up this landscape editor. Uh, what we want to do is in the manage tab under new landscape, instead of clicking create new, we want to go ahead and import from file. We'll use height map file. And we're just going to use our T terrain, which will go ahead and you can already see that it has an idea of how this terrain should look. What's great about um, using one of the common resolutions is by default it should usually understand how many components and sections it should have. Um, so that's really one of the great things of using that resolution UE has put out. And of course you can also play with the Z scaling. Uh, this is something that UE actually recommends to make something closer to real world scale. Um, I'm really fine with how it looks at 100%. So I'm going to keep it that way. I'm going to go ahead and click import. That's just going to go ahead and import landscape. And this is our landscape in Unreal Engine. That's It's looking pretty cool actually. Um, but this one problem, if we go ahead and click play and we want to go ahead and run into our landscape to see how it would walk around and how it would look to rock around and um, it's not really a good example. Um, so let me just go ahead and go to our player start. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete the player start. Which means that any place I'm at in this world and I click play, it's just going to create my character. And even then, it doesn't seem to work well. I think our landscape's already in the bounds. But if you've tried this, there's a big chance your character just died. Um, and you're just stuck, your camera's stuck in a certain place. And the reason for this is if you go to Window and you click the... Okay, that's the World Outliner, but we don't want the World Outliner. Um, you want the... Not the Levels tab. 
Ah, world settings. <laughs> Why did it take so long to think about that? You just want to go to window, world settings. And there's a big problem, um, a big reason why your character was dying, maybe it was at a low value, sometimes I think they're on 10,000, so if I go ahead down to this area and hit play, yeah, my camera just doesn't do anything, I'm stuck in a certain place, it's because your character died, you just want to adjust your key, kill Z to a pretty high value, so that your player can actually walk around on your terrain. So if I go ahead and hit play, now my uh, player can walk around in my terrain without any problems. So we're going to go ahead and close world settings. And we actually want to try our weight maps. But there's one problem, we can't try our weight maps without having landscape layers. So you can see here in the paint section, we don't have any layers. Now that we create layers, it's actually pretty simple. We're going to go to our content browser, right click and click material. I'm going to call this M landscape, the M standing for material. Just want to double click and open that up. We're going to dock that to our UE5 window. We're just going to go ahead, right click, and just want to type in layer blend. Actually, it's a bad idea to type in landscape layer blend. And this might look like a simple output node. Uh, that doesn't really have any inputs, but if I click on the plus layers here, which will add more array elements, and suddenly uh, this looks more interesting. So we have three indexes now because I plus, uh, clicked plus three times, so we have three array elements. The first one, layer name, it's going to be base layer, and this will be for dirt. The second index, we'll just go ahead and name that uh, layer... Two, oh, layer one, actually. Layer one, and index two, we're gonna go ahead and name layer two. Now you can actually go ahead and name this grass, rock, or whatever you're gonna put into these, uh, but which I like to name it something generic like this. So if for some reason in your game or in your scene you're gonna have a different type of landscape, like an alien planet, then you don't really want to put alien matter in the grass shader, it's pretty weird. And uh, this is just generally better. Um, better if you're gonna have a varying type of landscape. The LB blend weight, um, it should all be LB blend weight, but the preview weight of index zero should be one, so that we can at least see something in the um, material. So you just go ahead and save. Um, I just, it's going to auto apply and our landscape still didn't change because if we click on the landscape, scroll down until we see landscape material, it doesn't have a material and we should go ahead and add a new material, it's going to be our M landscape. Let's just click that and now it's just going to go ahead uh, and the landscape should turn black after a while, uh, but while it does its thing, just want to go and go to our active landscape editing. And what you'll see now is we have a base layer, layer 1, and layer 2, which is really cool. And what we want to do is you want to right-click on the base. Actually, you don't want to right-click on the base layer yet. What you want to do is you see these plus buttons. They actually create layer info, um, which is just a fancy word for we're importing the texture and have a few settings to adjust it, in fact. But we're going to go ahead and create a layer info gonna call it uh, we're gonna use a weight blended layer normal and we are gonna save it into the new map shared assets it's a folder that's created for your landscape and we just want that to kind of clean up our folders just create a weight blended um, layer info for everything uh, great and now we have still nothing has changed at all it's still a black landscape um, that's what we're gonna go ahead and fix. What we want to do is we actually want to right click on our layer one and import from file. We're gonna use the slope zero to 15. And then it's just gonna go ahead and import that weight map. And we're gonna go ahead, click on layer two, right click on layer two, import from file, use our 15 to 90, which is of course the rock layer. So the base layer is going to be dirt, layer 1 is going to be grass, and layer 2 is going to be rock. 
If you want to make it easier, you can just go ahead, right click, type in create comment from section. Um, I'm just going to move the layer blend out of that. And we're just going to go here at the side, type a comment. And uh, the comment's going to be layer base layer is usually dirt. Then comma layer one is usually grass and layer two is usually rock. Of course you can go ahead and uh, add as many layers as you want but this is just a good note. I'm gonna scroll this up and awesome now we have this as a guide for our layer blend in the future. But the problem is, is we already applied our layer maps uh, but we're not really seeing any of them. It's because we have to go to our M landscape and actually have something to display for each layer. Now, the best way to do this is just to right click in the open, search for constant free vector. And in this case, it will act like a color. So you can just click on this red block in the details tab and you can just color this to a greenish color. Uh, that was red. <laughs> greenish color and click OK. Put this in layer 1 because we established that layer 1 is going to be the grassy layer. You can just go ahead, copy and paste this or Control w to duplicate. Put this in layer 2 but we're going to go ahead and color this more grayish uh, because of course being a rocky texture. And we're going to go ahead and just duplicate another one. And this is our base layer. We're going to make this uh, brownish color to represent dirt and this should change the preview to a dirtish color with the settings we have set up. So we're going to go ahead and save. Just going to go ahead and compile. Compiling can take a long time uh, based on the complexity of your shader and what we're going to do is we're going to build out the shader so that in the future we don't have to do as much layer blending. I think we picked a bit of a too much of a neon green so I'm just gonna change the saturation down a bit and just go ahead and save and I'm not just gonna go ahead and recompile that quickly. In the next part we'll talk about replacing these colors with textures. Okay and here we can see um, yeah uh, these green parts are where all the grass is going to be mapped out and these um, grey parts are where all the rock is going to be um, laid out. And what's great about this workflow is you can just right click and re-import. So you can just go ahead and at any time just replace your white maps. <laughs> this is a really good static workflow if you have a landscape that you're pretty proud of and you don't want auto material to run on every frame. This is pretty good. And well, you could use virtual texturing. Virtual texturing also has a bit of its own downsides. Um, but we are gonna be using virtual height field meshes in the future to bring a tessellation type effect to our landscape because UE5 actually removed tessellation. Um, but that's in the future part for now. Next part, we're just going to do basic texturing and just change our M landscape material up to add a few material functions just to clean up what kind of mess this is going to become in the next part. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit like if you liked the video. Hit dislike if you didn't. And if you hit dislike, please tell me what I did wrong. I would really love... A bit of criticism to help me towards making this a better tutorial series. Uh, anyway, good night everybody.